You find me on the North Wales coast in the Greenfield Valley close to the town of Hollywell. This area is a hive of history going back almost a thousand years with a treasure chest of ruins and remains. Welcome to another explore. Now I'm assuming that the items of industry that you see on the floor of the courtyard area, that's the name I'm going to give this area, are original relics removed from these buildings when they fill into abandonment. Now that's quite an impressive piece of kit. I haven't got a clue what it is though. Anyway, the lower cotton mill was the second mill to be constructed here at Greenfield. And it was built by the Cotton Twist Company in 1785. And it was originally six stories high and it's reported that it took just ten weeks to construct. But we just have the two levels surviving today. Add the other four back on top and it would have been a very impressive building indeed. This painting depicts the size of the mill very well, nestled in the valley. I would say that it shows the building prior to 1835 as there is no chimney visible and it was that year that steam engines were installed. Looks properly abandoned. If you look at all the bricked up doorways with the wooden lintel still, still in position. That one looks, uh, looks quite an age, it must be. There's another one. All the, it's just doorway after doorway. In every doorway that it looks like it's been repurposed at some time. I know it was when it started life it was a um a cotton mill and then became a flour mill. Do you take that arch? Was that a full arch to the grid? So you've got an arch there, then there's a a column, another arch there, so there's an arch built within an arch. It's so difficult to work out just what each, well it's impossible to work out what each piece was for. These even look like ovens. And then you've got a change here from the, the red brick to great big slabs of stone. We get a brick again, and then we get a stone, obviously a doorway or a hatchway of some description that's been filled in. And this is intriguing. It's almost like a metal cage holding it together because it's become weak. Probably another doorway that's been bricked up. 
and I know that you can see exactly the same on the other side like a metal rusting metal cage absolutely brilliant if only there were some photographs that existed or even some drawings contrast of crumbling brickwork rusting iron and stalwart stone now you take this is this is that just a shelf or now you try to imagine that this was six stories high full of cotton spinning machines Got a great big timber there look I assume that would have gone right across to the other side. Do we have one on the other side? We do. Bit difficult to see in the sun in the shadow there. Probably a, a main floor support. And even down there, you've got an arch. So how far down was there another floor below this? Was it a water course? Don't appear to have on that side. As the 19th century beckoned, our mill here worked close to seven and a half thousand spindles and the British cotton industry was booming. The company's owners and directors were very, very wealthy people. In 1795, the company's mills were insured at just over £80,000, a huge amount and that's approximately 10 million in today's money, and registering also as one of the highest value companies in the country. However, as with many at the time, the Cotton Twist Company of Hollywell was guilty of making that wealth by exploiting people. Around 300 were employed at their lower mill, many of them children. An 18-hour day would not have been unusual, and working in very dangerous conditions at risk of losing fingers, limbs or even life and probably for very little pay life here would have been miserable and hard the ultimate suffering however would have been thousands of miles away in the southern usa where the cotton fields were worked by merciless slave owners by black african slaves who suffered in the most horrific way to allow cotton to be imported to britain to feed these very mills I thought that went back further, but here, once again, look, you've got a big bricked up arch. And you've even got some plaster there, some plaster left on the walls. What was the, what were they? What was this building used for? An air brick. And then a lot of plaster still on the walls. And now moving away from the building, I don't think we can go too far because we've got houses, but even on this bit, before the wall is lost to vegetation, you've got another huge great arch, you've got another bricked up doorway. In fact, you've even got what looks like a change, is that an addition there with a different type of bricks or... And you've got two huge great buttresses supporting the wall. And then unfortunately, the rest of the brick is buried in there. And there's no way I'm going in there with those brambles. Fantastic. gates there. Are they the original factory gates? Oh, the last time they let employees in or out. Or well, it could be a later edition. <laughs> so 
here's the other side of some of those bricked up doorways. Bricked up doorways that hold a secret that more than likely will never be revealed. Someone started a bit of a fire there. Getting the top level, were they window? I think they're probably windows, but they're bricked up. For what purpose? Look here, look, another big arch that's been bricked up and then a doorway made in it, or was it a window? And here, do you remember the, the other side of the wall I said about the arch? Were there other levels under here or was it a water course? Well, this is the opposite side, still gives no clues. Although we have here what looks like a shoot or of some description. Let's angle the camera up. I'm going to quickly go back to the other side again and see if the there's another side to that. So I'm re-entering the main building or the main area as it were. I'm looking for the opposite. What's that? Is that it? Yep, that looks like it. So you've got a bit of wood, so it's wooden lined. And you've got a bit of metal. And sure enough, if you look down, that's where I was looking up just a few seconds ago. What was that for? And here's the Remember I talked about the cage area, metal cage holding the stone together. Well, here's the other side of it and we've got a more or less identical feature. It's almost holding the stone together next to this wonderfully impressive buttress made of stone. Now I'm assuming that the original build is the red brick. This buttress is made of stone, which I'm assuming is also post original building and keep the you know the building up and what it looks like here there was another buttress this looks like it's been repointed at some time but I would imagine the wall is coming away in fact you look at those bricks and almost moving on their axis and this buttress has either fallen down or been pulled away uh, large rotten piece of metal there and just every now and then there's the odd thing like that brick there it just doesn't seem to fit got some metal rods up there are they for strengthening the wall or or what We've got some real abandonment here. Just what have we got in here? Let's put a bit of light on, shall we? That seems to come out just a bit up there. We've got some more bricks. I think there's a lot of rubbish been thrown down. Is that a, a piece of metal part of it, or it's just possible to tell? We've got a big crack in the stone lintel there. And look, yet another arch bricked up. I mentioned earlier that other than being a cotton mill, this was also a flour mill. This began production in 1850, but how did this prosperous cotton mill fall into decline so quickly? Competition from the Lancashire mills was fierce, and with the advent of steam power came the opportunity to increase productivity. To keep up with this technology, steam power came to Greenfields in 1835, but it failed to halt the decline, and in 1841, after a series of detrimental inspections causing fines and unsustainable losses, the company went into liquidation. Nine years later, the site was taken over to become the Victoria Flour Mill. I'm going to make a guess that this area here, we're very close to the river, which is obviously the power source of the mill before steam. That's just over there. 
let's have a look up here. I'm thinking this could be part of the water wheel area. Let's have a look up here. A little bit of a bridge here. But there's, there's your river, you can see it quite clearly rushing there. You see that? The power that's giving you, and you only need a small amount to turn those wheels. So what have we got here? I think what we've got here is a several levels of water courses where water, probably a drain off. Now look at that, look at that. And that cracker, a little arched area. In fact, I'm pretty certain this is where water would have come through. The cover's gone, this would have been covered over. We've got that lovely arch there. I don't think it's the main channel for the, the wheel, but I'm pretty certain it's like a drainage area. Let's see if I can get up here. can't really get any higher. Now I know for a fact that our wheel that originally powered this mill was 15 foot high by 7 foot uh, wide. Would a 15 foot by 7 foot wheel sit in that position? I think it could. And I'm sure those are the bolts that would have held it in place. I think what we've got here is our wheel, wheel pit, wheelhouse. And I think this has all been rebuilt afterwards when it ceased, when probably steam power came in. This is Flour Mill Pond, named after the flour mill, which came after the cotton mill had ceased production. This pond was still here when the cotton mill was used, and it was obviously its power source. Now I'm going to stick my neck out a little bit, and I'm going to come up with a theory as to how this works, so bear with me, I may be completely wrong. But I'm going to say that water came from our mill here, our pond rather, I've just noticed, look at the, it's even paved underwater there. That's lovely. So I'm going to suggest our water came this way somehow. You've got a nice drop here. I know there was quite a drop, 15, 16 foot. That would create a water race, which would get things nice and frothy for our water wheel. Now water would have come racing down here and into this part here. Remember I was looking into what I thought was the water wheel. Um, now I'm above that area now. So this is the area where I think is the water wheel. And now that square there, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that was the spindle for the wheel. So our water would have come through that archway, now bricked up, turned our great big wheel and then would have given us the power for our spinning mill factory. I think once the water wheel had been surpassed by steam, the arches were bricked up and a steam engine was installed here. And I think it was put in exactly the same place 
as the water wheel. And I think what you see there are the foundations and structure that held the steam engine in place and obviously it would have turned ex in our uh, spinning machines in exactly the same way. I think there's, bought, there's been a lot of alterations but that's my theory and I'm going to stick to it. Okay, so for the first time in this explore, we'll refer to a map, and as usual, we'll go to the National Library of Scotland. Now, on this modern overhead view, you can clearly see Flour Mill Pond here, and right next to it, you can see the shell of our mill. Now, incidentally, this line of trees here, this is the Hollywell to Hollywell Junction Abandoned Railway. And I shall be covering that in another part of this series. Anyway, I was stood here. This is on the bank. And that's where I explained my theory of how the water went from here, it's the pond, into the mill. And it seems that I was probably around 80% correct. But to explain the potential other theory, we need to go back in time. So here we are. This is a map of 1912. And it shows the area really well. Once again, we've got our reservoir or uh, flour mill pond here. Here's the old railway line. And here, in a much more fully extent, is our mill building. And if you look here, it says Victoria Mills. But even then, it was disused, and that's about 1912. I don't know the actual date that it became fully disused. It was used for a few other um, uses after it ceased becoming a flour mill but what I want to point out here is if you look to this side of the pond or reservoir you'll see the word mill race now mill race that's what I mentioned earlier it gets the, the water speeded up it gets it frothy it gets it violent and it gets it perfect for turning a wheel but it looks like it's on completely the other side of the the pond and if I zoom in a little bit, so we zoomed in and that makes it a lot clearer. Now, this to me looks like it could well be a channel, a water channel. So our water would have come out of the reservoir along this channel, turned here towards the mill. Now, you've got this little bit of an X here, and I'm part of me thinking, could that actually be the water wheel? It's possible, but I don't think so, although I can't be certain, but... What I think is our water would come through here, it would channel into, this is our bank, it would channel into another short reservoir, smaller reservoir here, be funneled into another channel here, and then into our water wheel, which I said is here. And then it would turn our wheel, wheel and then the rest of the water would disappear off up here um, and into the rest of the river. I'd love to know if that's the right theory. I think it is. If anyone can tell me otherwise, please let me know. Now, I've noticed here on the ground, um, it looks like a conduit for water. It used to have a cover, as you can see, and it's going diagonally across what was uh, sort of a courtyard area. I think it goes to the pond at the front, and I'll show you a bit later. And that's what it looks like to me. Now we've also got these other um, outlying buildings or rooms. Now that's a strange looking thing. That looks like a sort of a, a dog bowl. Something to feed. It's obviously something to do with water. There's water in it now. That's for its actual use. And you can't. No guesses. There's so much vegetation here, and this is the middle of January, and you still can't get in there. And then we've got another room here, I like this one because we've still got flagstones on the floor. Was this an office or something? Could you imagine people in here chatting about the day, having a gripe about something, discussing the day's events or just working alone? This is the only fully intact building on the entire site. It's, very, it's obviously been renovated. I 
believe I've read somewhere that it was the original factory offices, but I can't be sure. But even so, it gives, because of its renovation, it gives a very good idea of what the, the factory would have looked like when it was in production. Here we have some more of the this abandoned machinery. As I said earlier, I, I can't be certain as to whether this came from Lower Mill. I would imagine it's chunky stuff. And I can't imagine that being hefted from far away just to sit in the rain and rust. I'd like to think it, it came from here. As to what it's uses, I have absolutely no idea. And those tunnels that you see under the building. Remember when we was in the factory before I saw a similar one and I couldn't work out what it was for? They're very, very similar and I'm wondering if there was a channel of water went from the factory under that and then to here. And also this pond, if you remember the channel, the drainage channel I pointed out, I'm, it's coming in this direction and I'm certain this is where it came from. And now look at that, look at that, that looks like, is that a piece of, it's a piece of gearing. Let's see, uh, Yeah, I wonder how long that's been down there. 